In this video, we do a Hobie Prongler 14 review after one year of fishing on it. Was it worth it? That's coming up right now. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Roman. Welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you here. If it's your first time here and you enjoy kayak fishing videos and watery adventures, consider subscribing. Click the bell notification so you don't miss anything. A year ago, I purchased this 2018 Hobie Pro Angler 14. I'm going to share some of my experiences with it. I'm also going to answer some common questions I get all the time when I'm out on the water. And I'm going to tell you if I regret the purchase or not. So let's go. First, we're going to cover the most basic thing possible, which is going to be the length, width, and the weight of the kayak. I'm giving you this information so you have it when you're making the considerations to see where you're going to store it and how you're going to transport it. So the dimensions for it are actually it's 163 inches long. This is a this is a 2018 model, and it translates to about 13 and a half feet. So that's how much storage you'll, that's some, that's how long of a storage you'll need if you're gonna put it in your garage or whatever. So uh, it's also uh, 38 inches wide, and that translates to about 3.1 feet. So those are the basic dimensions of the kayak. Uh, so you can figure out where you're gonna keep it. Uh, okay, and the weight it weighs about 120 pounds uh, that's just with the basic things that it comes with actually you guys can watch the unboxing of this kayak I'll put a link for it up here to see what comes with the kayak okay I did the full unboxing when I got it and I show you everything that comes in the box at 120 pounds this is a heavy kayak okay when I first got it I wasn't sure how to maneuver it by myself the way I move my kayak around is always on the on the on the scupper cart so um, otherwise I think we'd have to have somebody help me get it to the car and load it up if I don't want to drag it on the cement or drag it on the sand um, and I don't want to do all that stuff so I come up with these little tricks to help myself uh, transport the kayak 100% by myself from my garage to the truck from the truck to the beach from the beach to my truck and then from my truck to my grass where I rinse it off and then back to my garage I couldn't do all that stuff on my own if I didn't have that cart so if you're going to be doing this by yourself most of the time, then getting the cart is going to be a huge help. Um, it's going to save your, your hole from being scratched up on the floor, on the ground, on the cement, or whatever. And it's going to make it easier for you to transport. Instead of, instead of carrying 120 pounds worth of weight, you're going to be uh, splitting the load with between you and the cart. The split depends on where, on which set of scupper ports you're using for the cart. So if you put it towards, on, towards the back, then you're carrying more of the weight. But if you put it right in the center, then you're just basically balancing it and and using your you, you, it won't be it won't seem as heavy. Um, I like to use the rear scupper. I like to use the rear scupper ports because it's uh, because of the technique I use to put the cart in place and it just allows me to lift up the back. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that piece, it's uh, how to put your scupper cart in the holes without tilting your kayak over and scratching it. I'll put a video for that up here too. Uh, okay, so let's move on to storage. Does that have pretty good storage? And yeah, I think it does. The front hatch is, is huge. When I know I'm going to stay out long, I'll bring uh, an extra change of clothes. I'll bring my, my, my weatherproof gear. And uh, that's usually good. I'll, and as I, as I start taking off layers, I'll put them in the front hatch. And then when it starts to get cold again, I'll put the layers back on. So it's, it's a good spot to keep dry stuff. Anyway, so that's the front hatch. On the Behind the seat, there's a big uh, area. It's probably like about three feet wide by two and a half feet wide, two and a half feet long. So it's a big square back there. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, it's like it's like wet storage you could say, because uh, it can get wet and it's exposed. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll put a, I'll put my extra seat back there and I'll let my kid fish from the back. So it's it's a cool, it's a big spot. It's a big enough spot that, he, that I feel comfortable with him fishing back there. And uh, it's actually a lot of space. So, uh, so it's good, it's actually a lot of space. There's a the 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 deck in front of where in front of my seat where the pedal drive is. I like to keep that whole area clear because sometimes I like to stand up. Under my seat, I like to I like to use the seat in the highest position, so that it gives me about I don't know about four to six inches of clearance under the seat. And under there, I keep a a, a box with tackle and uh, a bin with with the baits and all that stuff that I like to keep handy. And then there's also the hatch. There's also the rectangular hatch in front of me. That open up and I have those two bait boxes, those two Plano boxes that came with the kayak. I keep one with um, like a uh, jig head, and then I keep uh, the second one with all my all my hard baits like crank baits and uh, and jerk baits. Um, so I rarely go into that hatch unless I'm fishing something, something specific. But most of the stuff I have in the stuff, most of that stuff I have it under my seat. Okay, so that's uh, that's storage. 
Another question I get about this kayak is how many rod holders does it come with? I think the twenty, I think the, I think the PA twelve has four rod holders right there in, in the in the gunnels, like in the sides, inside. But the Hobie PA fourteen has six. So if, if, when you're sitting in the kayak, you you look you look down and you'll see that it's got three holes on one side, three holes on the other side, and inside there's actually some tubes that can you can put your rod rods in. So you put your rods in, you have the three rods in there, and then it goes to the back, and then on the side it's got a like a little rod holder cradle for the for the butts of the of the rods. I don't like to have the rods sticking up anymore because it keeps me from going under uh, a low cover. So for example, if I go under a bridge or something, I don't have to worry about the rods hitting. So I so I usually just always fish with the rods down or stowed away inside of those uh, rod holders. Um, it does have uh, two rod holders in the back for if you want to carry rods sticking up. So that gives you a grand total of. Uh, eight spots for your rods so that's how many rod holders it comes with six low profile tucked away and two sticking up if you're going from a regular kayak to a Hobie PA with pedal drive you have all these new things that you need to learn right you have the, your, your rudder controls and mine has a rudder control on each side which is kind of awesome so just depending on which kind of uh, rod you're using whatever your freehand is you could just go and turn your kayak the 2018 PA 14 has the uh, rudder controls one on each side I like to I I installed mine with the elevator. Uh, it's about it gives you another like inch and a half to two inches of rise, so the handle is sticking up higher, and it actually works out well because like I said earlier, I like to hold I like to keep my seat up high, so it makes it to where it's right there and I don't have to reach down too far to control the kayak. Okay, uh, this is for steering. Okay, now the steering on it is is uh, decent. I've heard people say it's sluggish, but I think it's just the way uh, physics works, right? It's just the nature of water. If you don't have enough momentum going forward then obviously you, you if you turn the rudder it's, it's not gonna have that much of an effect as you would expect and that's because you don't have enough momentum going forward right it's a mat it's a big massive it's a big 120 pound kayak plus your weight sitting on the water so if you're if you're sitting there and you're going kind of slow like really slow and you turn the turn the rudder it's not gonna have that much of an effect because it's just doesn't have enough momentum to actually make it move right so so I've heard people complain that I think that's why they're saying it's not responsive. But for me, it's it's okay. What I like to do if if I don't feel that it's that it's catching, like it's turning. So to help it, what I'll do is if it's turned hard and I start going again, I'll I'll level it out a little bit to make it like a like a quarter of the way instead of the full half turn. I'll make it like a quarter turn, and then the rudder will, will start to turn easier, and then I'll then I'll turn it hard. And it's kind of hard to explain. So I'll start I'll start my turn with the rudder not so hard to the right or the left. And then once it starts to catch, I'll turn it harder and it'll just be fine because then I'll have enough momentum going and the kayak's already going in that direction. I am considering doing an upgrade on the on the, on the the rudder. I haven't done it yet, but I have the rudder in the garage ready to go, so I need to make that, but I've been waiting to like film it. So that's coming up too, so just make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that piece of it. All right, so that's the the control. Oh, yeah, and there's also other things that, that this kayak comes with. There's the, the, the rudder release, of course which is a cable uh, that's on the side. When you pull that line and you put it on the cleat, that's gonna keep your rudder up, that's when you store it. And then when you get on the water, you wanna release your rudder, you just pop it off the cleat and let the line slack out into the into the hole and that gives the, the rudder enough slack to, to come down to the water and then you, your rudder's down, right? There's also another uh, rudder-like device in this kayak, it's called the Skeg. And that one, uh, the di only difference is it's a little bit bigger and it doesn't turn. Right, the skeg is for stability when you're going. Uh, when say you say you're, say you're fishing one spot, you're done fishing a spot, you're going to move to a different spot, and you're just going to beeline it for it. Then you want to use the skeg because the skeg is going to help your, your kayak track better and go straight. Otherwise, you might be fighting it like going left, going right, going left, going right. The skeg is going to help stabilize that and just keep you more steady. Okay, uh, and then again, that's it's on the, that's on the left, and you pull the cable off the cleat let the cable, sorry, you pull the line off the cleat and you let the line into the kayak and that'll drop your skeg and you'll feel it like get more stable and then when you get to your destination you're gonna fish, you wanna be more maneuverable then you would pull the skeg up, cleat it and then you're ready to go. You can paddle around and maneuver wherever you need to fish and then that's what the purpose of the skeg is for. And when I first got the kayak, when I first was on a Hobie, I didn't realize that they had, they had a skeg so I was like kinda like when I was trying to traverse to a different spot I was kind of doing this, you know, like going back and forth, just because trying to like because rudders kind of sensitive sometimes. So 
when, but as soon as I drop the skin, I can just like stabilize it, made it a lot smoother. Okay, so that's gonna help you get there more efficiently without going in a wobbly line. It's gonna help you get there straight. Okay, so that those are the stuff that the kayak comes with. Those are the, all the, the little controls, right? And then you also have, of course, your your pedal drive. Your pedal drive is is um it's pretty it's pretty easy to to sort out. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna cover that right now. I just wanted to cover all the different things that if you're new to the kayak. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily know what they're for okay um okay and if you like especially if you didn't read your instruction manual uh, one of the questions i get a lot is asking if the kayak is stable and yes it's super stable i fish it standing up all the time and recently i've even been fishing it standing up when i see wakes coming i used to sit down when i saw the wakes now i just stand up and keep fishing it, it, i'm get, i feel that comfortable on it um of course it's not as boat you can't walk on it or, you can't walk around it like a boat but uh there's still uh, a lot more stable than any kayak I've ever been on, right? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's due to the to the, the hull design. If you look under the hull, it's got this kind of shape where it's, it's like a, like, a, like, it almost looks like a pontoon, right? It's got two hulls, but it's, it's part of one. But the outside hulls are the bigger, the bigger, bigger sections. So what it does is it gives you, it gives you a really solid, uh, feel. So if you push on it, you're automatically right on the, most buoyant part and if you push on this way you're automatically on the most buoyant part that compared to like a regular kayak where most regular kayaks have like a v shape it goes down and it's got a little bit of, of a v at the bottom that little v thing at the bottom plus the sides being more rounded or like more steep that gives you uh more rock right so you can so it's it's not going to be as buoyant as this right so if you have a it's hard to explain here but like a when you put your weight on the side of a regular kayak that that more of a v-shape it's gonna feel like it's gonna roll easier right whereas on the on the triangular it's got that kind of like a pontoonish shape at the bottom um those two pontoons on the side are the, are the most buoyant points so when you push on it you feel stability right away so that is my attempt at trying to explain the stability if you want a full-on stability check and see uh, how it, what it looks like when you when you flip this kayak over how to get it flipped back over how to ride it um check out this video up here i did a whole video on stability so i think you'll enjoy that if you're thinking about getting this kayak the next question is is it hard to paddle it it's not hard to paddle um i don't i, I didn't get sore at all the first time i used it um the only time i got a little bit sore was when i was out there messing around trying to get trying to go as fast as i could and so I think most of the time you're using it in such a low um, aerobic zone that you're actually burning uh, you're actually burning fat instead of carbs, so you're not getting that lactic acid um, buildup that will give you the the soreness, right? So as long as you're out there fishing it, like if you're like it's like walking, you can walk for a long time and not feel sore the next day, but if you run and you get into that zone where you're like making lactic acid then yeah you're gonna get sore you're gonna have that soreness so yes it's it's uh, really easy to pedal um i find that little pedals help get you get you going faster and that's actually um like i'd say medium pedals uh i wouldn't do the full on like back and forth all the way because that's like seems like less efficient and then you have like the the fin slap in the hole it's like plunk 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 so uh i would do like medium to medium to short strokes like that that'll get you going and that's just an, as much as you need um, it's a really cool uh, system another question is did it help with your fishing if it, how so so a lot of people here's, here's where we're gonna get into a little bit of controver controversy and I'm okay with it because I'm, I'm just talking about my personal experience okay so I was on, a, on the Jackson uh, Kraken 13.5 it's a awesome kayak I love it I actually prefer the Jackson when it comes to going through the surf. It just has like a big hole up front. It's like a big V, and like it's designed to cut into like the La Jolla waves and, and get over the waves and and get out to sea. Um, the the Prangler, it's not that good for like for going into a wave. The the wave will just come right over the the bow. So that's that's the one negative I have about this kayak. Okay, so let's so uh, the reason I bring that up is did it help with your fishing? Okay, so yes with my old kayak i was paddling all the time right paddle 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 you put your paddle down on your lap and you cast and then you start reeling a little bit 
and then you have, if you have to maneuver your kayak, you you put one ha get one hand on down and put it start paddling with the kayak, and while you're trying to like keep your line tight, and then you kind of take up the slack, you maneuver, 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 take up the slack, and then and then I, I know for a fact that I was missing a ton of bites during that little process, right? And sometimes when when it gets like a little too hairy, then you have to like actually put your rod down and like get out of the way for something or like maneuver something maneuver out of the way for something else or uh it just it just uh that all of that time that you're that you're either not holding your rod or you haven't cast it because you need to get into position is time that your line could be in the water time that your line could be time that your lure could be in front of a fish and time that time that you could be catching a fish right so yes i think having the pedal drive is a huge huge advantage over a guy that doesn't have a pedal drive because your your hands are like free right your hands are open yeah you still got to steer a little bit but like turning a rudder real quick and then getting back to your fishing is, is not a, as big of an interruption as picking up your, your 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 paddle and trying to maneuver your kayak around while you're trying to also fish I guess it all boils down to this okay what's gonna give you more line in the water time right so and and Lining the water time doesn't mean just having a line out, slacked out what, while you're trying to like maneuver your kayak. No, it means lining the water, like fishing time, right? Fishing time. So like lines in the water, you're holding, you're holding the line, you have, a, you have tension in the line and you, you can feel the bite, right? What's going to give you more options? What's going to make that time for you longer? And that's going to be a pedal, a pedal kayak, okay? So th this is, again, this is just my opinion and this is all based off my personal experience. I fish the, the the paddle thing for about a year and a half before I got the pro angler and pff, it's night and day right not to mention for example uh, the the option to troll right you can actually pedal and get from spot A to spot B while you're trolling something right so I know it's it seems like eh, who cares trolling but but it is again more time in the water more line in the water time right uh, if you're going from point A to point B, for like once from fishing spot one to fishing, to fishing spot two, and you can troll on the way there, then then the guy with this paddling and not trolling is gonna have like less of a chance of catching a fish than you are because you have more time in the water. Okay, so anyway, that's the uh, that's my uh, opinion of it. That's my uh, the way I, I I I that's that's my that's been my experience with it. If you disagree, that's fine. You can leave it in the comments and tell me why paddling with the by fishing with a paddle kayak is, is better than with the with the drive and if you say it's louder uh, I don't I don't believe that my drive is not that loud it, I can see how how people would say that if you're if you're if you're paddling as hard as you can and the the fins the drive is slapping the hull but if you do it slowly that's all you need to get to get moving around and maneuver it's not like it's making a huge splash it's all underwater already it's not making bubbles bubbles is where you get all the noise if anything is making bubbles it's gonna be a paddle that's coming in and out of the water and creating little eddies and creating little bubbles that's that's what's loud i mean I, i'm a diver so i know that bubbles are super loud when you're underwater and what's going to create bubbles a paddle slapping the surface or a paddle kind of even just going through the water sometimes it'll create those little air those little it'll create like a little eddy with bubbles and that's what that's what's loud okay so uh if you have any other arguments as to why a paddle kayak is better than a pedal kayak go ahead and leave it in the comments <laughs> the next thing we're going to cover is what's it like to transport it and so I've done a video on this already. I'm just going to link the video instead and tell you guys really quick what it's like to transport it. So like I said earlier, sorry, I use my, my scupper cart wheels for everything, okay? Um, if I don't have my scupper cart wheels, I, I'm basically, I'm basically going to need a second person to help me maneuver this kayak if I don't want to get it all scratched up by dragging it somewhere, right? So scupper cart is crucial for me. And then my truck. My truck is like, uh, it's a six and a half foot bed, but with a tailgate, net, with a tailgate down, it ends up being about eight and a half foot and it's actually the perfect length for this hobie like i don't even use the t-bone the anymore i just put the, the kayak in there strap it down at two points get the flag up and it's ready to rock uh if you guys want to see how i do that how i load my kayak how i get it in my truck and how i get it um from my truck to the water um check it out i'll put a video for that up here would i recommend it to a friend do you regret it that is the question of the day that is the 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 what all this is going to boil down to is yes i would recommend it to a friend i'll recommend it to a family member <laughs> i'll recommend it to a stranger it's just gonna up your game so much you're gonna be so much more comfortable on the water 
And so here's my criteria for this, okay? If you are new to kayak fishing, I would just say rent a kayak, borrow a kayak, and take one rod, get out there, see if you enjoy the experience, okay? If you enjoy the experience and you think, all right, this is the thing, I'm gonna get into this, this is what I'm gonna do, and instead of buying uh, like an entry level kayak and then trying to figure out what to do with it and then buying a, a stepping one step up, save up and just get a really nice kayak once and for all and, and be done with it. It's Basically what it comes down to is once you figure out that this is your sport and this is what you want to do, I would recommend getting a paddle kayak. It doesn't necessarily, necessar it doesn't necessarily have to be a Hobie Pro Angler, uh, 14 or 12 or whatever, or even a Compass. The compasses are nice, um, but figure out a, a pedal kayak and don't. Uh, and this is going to be probably some more controversial stuff. I've seen other kayaks that have different uh, drives, like a like a like a oh, what's it called, like a bicycle pedal thing with a, with a prop that spins. Those are loud. Um, I've tried a couple of them, different brands. I'm not going to say, but I prefer the 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 fin action over the propeller. It just it's just gonna be too loud with the with the prop that that actually is loud, so yes I recommend this, and no I do not regret the purchase at all I every time I go fish every time I'm every time I'm on the water every time I'm done fishing I I, I I'm happy to be on the water so right now guys it takes me about it takes me about I, I timed myself the other day it takes me seven minutes to go from where I, how I store my kayak to to in the truck and on the road. It takes me seven minutes to get my kayak on my cart, put everything in, in there that I need to take with me for fishing, get it in the get it in the truck, and uh, tie it down and and be on the road. It takes me about seven minutes from 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 deciding I want to go fish. So so I could be at home. So I get I get the text. It's like, hey, we're going out. You want to come fish with us? Sure, let's go. It takes me seven minutes to get from that text to to on the road. So. You can you can make your own little system of, of loading and unloading that's gonna make you more efficient, right? Once I get home, I take my kayak out, I rinse it out. It maybe takes me about ten minutes to to go through my whole process and store it in a way that I'm ready to go for next time, where it's gonna take me again seven minutes to be on the road. So yeah, it's a big kayak, it's heavy. I, I get that, and sometimes in big weather and big uh, in surf, the waves gonna come over the bow, which sucks. But other than that, um, for my purposes, I always fish in the bay. I don't go to La Jolla that much, but I always fish in the bay, San Diego Bay, Mission Bay, and it's always calm, it's awesome, it's a perfect platform for that, super stable. So for me, the, the, Hobie, the Hobie Pro Angler 14 is the fishing platform that helps me get to fishing, okay? And by that I mean, it doesn't get in my way, okay? The, it, it gets me to where I need to go, it does it in a way where I feel stable, and and safe, and dry, and comfortable. Okay, that's what it comes down to. All those things allow me to focus on what I want to focus on, which is what's the current, where are the fish, what bait should I use, am I going with the current, am I casting against the current, is it windy? That's another thing. On windy days, I love this kayak. It's it's heavy, so it's stable. It doesn't push, get pushed around as much. And you can actually hold your position by pedaling, pointing into the wind, pedal, and you stay in that spot, and you fish that spot, even in wind. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're looking for more Hobie Prongo 14 videos, I'm going to put a playlist up here that is going to show you all the videos I've made about my Hobie Prongo 14, including the unboxing, how I transport it, how I get it from my truck to the to the shore, and how I... How I uh, load it onto my cart without tilting it over so it, doesn't get, so it doesn't get scratched, how to modify your cart so you can load it by yourself solo and uh, a couple other videos regarding the Hobie Pranger 14 so I hope you enjoyed it I'll talk to you soon and I'll see you guys on the water Woo!